All right, our second example is using the parent function 1 over x. Remember, this is called our inverse function, and it is one of the tougher ones to graph, so that's why I picked it. Our transform function here is this g of x, negative f bracket x minus 5, and then plus 4. So we still are using function notation. This x minus 5 is replacing our x. We have a plus 4 here on the outside, and we have a negative here on the outside. So again, let's start by naming what our different transformations are. So let's start, go from left to right here. So this negative here tells me that I am having a reflection over the x-axis. There we go. The negative 5 in with the x in brackets. Remember backwards thinking, so this means I'm moving to the right 5. And this plus 4 all by itself means we're going up 4. Okay, so those are my three different transformations. Next, we have to rewrite our transform function, but using our parent function's notation instead. So again, our parent function is 1 over x. That's what f at x equals. So wherever I see the f bracket in our, my equation, I'm going to replace this f bracket with what the f bracket equals. It's 1 over x. So my new transform function, g at x, So my new transform function, g at x, is going to equal, let's put in the 1 over x part first. So, But instead of writing an x, remember x has been replaced with x minus 5. So it's going to be 1 over x minus 5. I have a negative out in front, so let's put some brackets around here. I'm going to put a negative out in front. And I also have a plus 4 that's attached to the end, so plus 4. Now we can simplify this a little bit. A negative out in front is the same thing as just putting a negative in the numerator. So this g at x, we could rewrite it as negative 1 all over x minus 5 and then plus 4. Both of these would be a correct way to write the equation. All right, so now we need to graph our uh, parent function, 1 over x. So, of course, you've memorized all these key points. And for this one, there are six key points. So let's label what they are again. I'll put the key points here. Key points. OK, so we have the key point here at 1, 1. We have 2 and half, and then we have half and 2. And then the other three key points are the same thing, but just the negatives of each of them. So negative 1, negative 1, So negative 1, negative 1, we've got negative 2 and 1 half, or negative 1 half, and we've got negative 1 half and negative 2. So these are all going to get mapped to their new spots. When we when we graph these on our graph, let's remember to put in our x and y axes here. I think I forgot to do that on the other example. So I got the point 1, 1, 2, half, and half, 2. 
and I've got the point negative 1, negative 1, negative half, negative 2, and uh, negative 2 and half. So I got those three points right there. And so when I graph this, uh, it's going to be kind of tricky on my tablet here, but usually I start at the 1, 1, and I just draw a nice downward uh, curve starting from there, and I go down through here, and I get as close to the x-axis as I can without touching it with a little arrow. And then I start back at that 1, 1 point and move up and get as close to the y-axis as possible without hitting it just like that. Same thing in the negative or quadrant 3 over here. So I start at my point negative 1, negative 1, and I draw a nice curve that goes through that point, and I go close to the y-axis as best I can. And then I take this one and I come down through here, and I go as close to the y-axis as best I can. And so there's my curve there. Uh, my parent function 1 over x. Those two curves with those two asymptotes, one at x squared, or one at x equals 0 and one at y equals 0, or one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis. So we're going to need an RSG chart to help us plot or map these new, our key points to our new places. So let's put an RST chart down here. So R, S, and T. Fringing on this uh, graph here, but I think that'll be okay. Our transformations are a reflection over the x-axis, so we remember that that is uh, affecting the y values, so we're taking each y value and multiplying them by negative 1. We're going right 5, which is taking all my x values and adding 5 to them, and we're moving up 4, which is taking all my y values and adding 4. So let's do our key points and remap them. So start the x values, all of them are being added. Uh, you're adding 5 to them. So 1 turns into 6, 2 turns into 7, half, well half plus 5 is 5.5. Five and Another way of writing that is 11 over 2. I like keeping fractions. Uh, negative 1 plus 5 is 4, negative 2 plus 5 is 3, and negative half plus 5 is 4.5, which is 9 over 2. All of our y values, we're turning uh, negative, or multiplying by negative 1, and then adding 4. So 1 turns into negative 1, plus 4 is 3. Half times negative is negative half, plus 4 is 3.5, which is the same as saying 7 over 2. 2 turns into negative 2, plus 4 is positive 2. Didn't change. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 4 is 5. Negative half times negative 1 is negative, or sorry, positive half. Positive half plus 4 is 4 and a half, which is 9 over 2. And last but not least, negative 2 turns to positive 2, plus 4 is 6. So there are our six new key points that have been mapped to their new transformed location. So let's plot these on our graph now. I'll use red. So 6, 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3 on 3. 7, and then 7 halves, which is 3.5. So 7 and 3.5, which would be right there. And then 11 over 2, remember that's 5.5. And then 2, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half, and then up 2 get our graph right there. Interesting order this is here. Uh, 4, 5 is a point. So 1, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 and 9 over 2. Remember 9 over 2 is just 4.5. So 3 and 4.5. And last but not least, uh, 4.5 and 6. So 4.5 and 6 would be right here. And so we can kind of see now where these curves are going to go. This one's going to sort of come out here and curve upwards here, and this one's going to come over from here and curve downwards here. Uh, you might also be able to see where our asymptotes are. Our asymptotes also get transformed by the RST chart. So our original asymptotes, if you can remember, the y-axis, which was x equals 0, and the x-axis, which is y equals 0, and the y-axis, which is y equals 0, 
or sorry, the x-axis, which is y equals 0. These also get transformed. So uh, this gets affected by the x values here, and the y gets affected by the y values. And because they start at 0, none of the multiplying things matter, but the adding by 5 and the adding by 4 do. So this asymptote, which was at x equals 0, now moves plus 5, or turns into x equals 5. And we can see that when we graph that line here, if I put x equals 5 right down here, it cuts through, and you can see how that's now going to form an asymptote. And this is at x equals 5. Our y1 now we add 4 to it, so it would become y equals y equals 4. Let's get this line here, or right here. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can see that this will cut right through and create another asymptote right there. When you draw your graphs, you do need to draw on the asymptotes and write their equations on the graph. So this one is y equals 4. So let's just finish this off by drawing our two curves here. So start at a point, draw through here, and get as close to the asymptote as possible. Same way this way, so draw through that curve and get as close to the asymptote as possible. And going from here on upwards, and then here on through, just like that. And there's our new transformed function. So it's been reflected, and it's been shifted all everything up 5 and everything over 4. Or sorry, everything up 4 and over 5, I got those mixed up. Our last thing here is we need to label our key points on our graph. So I usually just like to do the positive ones. So we have a point here at 1, 1. I have a point here at 2 and half. And also another one at half and 2. And so on your transform function, label the same three points, but they're mapped version. So 6, 3. So 6, 3 is this point right here, so 6, 3. We've got this one right here, which is 7 and 7 over 2. And we've got this point right here, which is 11 over 2 and 2. Perfect. So our three points are labeled here, our three points are labeled here. Uh, oh, our graphs haven't been labeled yet, so our original graph is f at x. I can just throw that on right here. And our red graph, well that's g at x. You can write g at x or you can write um, what the actual equation is, which we figured out per before, up here. Okay. So we have now successfully graphed this. The last thing we need to do, I've said the last thing, I know, three times now, but uh, our final step was to state the domain and the range. So if we think about the domain, what are the possible x values that exist for our transform function? Well, all of the x values exist, because this goes on forever on the right direction and forever in the left direction, except at our asymptote, which is equal to 5. So x, e, r. but x cannot equal 5. And our range, same idea, all the y values are possible, except for at our asymptote, and our asymptote for y is at 4. So y can't equal 4. Yes, it was a long question. Yes. This is one of the more complicated ones to graph, but I can almost guarantee that you will see a graph like this on a future quiz or a future test. So make sure that you know the key points, you know how to use the RSP chart, and you can label everything properly. So now it's your turn. I want you to look at these three different examples that I have listed here, and I want you to do the following for them. So for each of these, state what the parent function is, state the transformations, graph both the parent function and the transform function using an RST chart. 
and I remind you here to properly label your diagram with three key points and any asymptotes that may exist. And lastly, state what the domain and range are for the transform function. You can find graph paper and an attachment on our class calendar. Good luck, and we'll see how you do in class.